I decided a long time ago that following the news can be dangerous to your health, your spiritual health anyway. And if I had my way, there would be a label on each television, newspaper, car radio, and computer that would say something to the effect of warning. News in high doses can cause damage to your faith in humanity. Quitting news now greatly reduces serious risks to your spirit. It can be overwhelming, can it? In Boston, a stone-faced, unrepentant Sarnaev is on trial for killing three people and injuring 264 others at the Boston Marathon two years ago. In Garland, Texas, two people were shot while trying to ambush an event featuring controversial cartoons of the Muslim prophet Muhammad, and now ISIS is taking credit for their attack. In Baltimore, 10 shootings were reported Thursday, continuing the wave of gun violence that began after riots overtook West Baltimore on April 27th. In Colorado, news networks make sure we are kept up to date on the trial of James Holmes, who pled not guilty by reason of insanity to killing 12 people and wounding 70 in his movie theater rampage three years ago. In Nepal, tens of thousands of young women from regions devastated by the recent earthquake are being targeted by human traffickers who are pretending to be a part of the rescue efforts. Around the U.S., we are all gearing up for what promises to be the best ever mudslinging fest, otherwise known as the 2016 presidential campaign. And thanks to social media, you don't have to concern yourself with the facts. You can pick whatever spin you prefer by simply choosing the news media outlet that suits your fancy. And down in Austin, within the halls of justice, legislators are lining up at the podium with proposed laws to ensure that life is as oppressive and miserable as possible for the LGBT community. And those are just a few of the headlines, thank you very much. What's the world coming to, we ask one another, while we run to turn on the news as if we can't get our fill of that which causes us to doubt the very existence of goodness in the world. But every once in a while, every once in a while, something happens to give me hope. Every once in a while, out of the blue, someone will do something that renews my faith in humanity. It's never newsworthy enough to compete for the headlines, and I almost never hear about it on Facebook. Someone who notices the stains on the sanctuary carpet, brings his steamer from home, and spends the next several hours cleaning the carpet. A couple who stopped by to drop off some plastic bags for the Red Door Pantry see that I'm tied up on the phone and offer to deliver groceries to the Red Door clients. Another couple stopped by the office on their way to visit a church member who is dying. One of them says, we'll talk about dying if she wants to talk about dying. We'll talk about heaven if she wants to talk about heaven or we'll talk about peanuts if she wants to talk about peanuts. None of these people will make headline news, but each one of them are obedient to Jesus' Jesus's command to love one another. This is my commandment, he says to his disciples, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. When we hear about someone laying down one's life for one's friends, we think of the ultimate sacrifice that soldiers make. Images come to mind of gravestones decorated by U.S. flags on Memorial Day weekend. 
When we hear about someone laying down one's life for another, we think of the sacrificial love that mothers have for their children. We think of the sleepless nights of a protective mother in a hospital with her child who is suffering from viral meningitis. These are the sort of things that come to mind when we think of laying down one's life for another person. But we don't think of cleaning carpets, delivering groceries, or hospital visitations. But as it turns out, the life that Jesus refers to being laid down in this morning's text is a Greek word that can be translated into the laying down or setting aside of one's heart or mind or soul or being. One commentator suggests a contemporary reading of Jesus' words to be, there is no greater unconditional love than when someone gets their ego out of the way for another. And if that's the case, you don't have to be a soldier on the battlefield or a mother next to a hospital bed to lay down your life for someone else. Instead, you can be just an ordinary, everyday person who is able to set aside your ego, your agenda, and a few moments of your time to talk peanuts with someone else. This morning's text is part of what's known as the farewell discourse of Jesus. Four chapters within the Gospel of John given by Jesus to 11 of his disciples immediately after the conclusion of the Last Supper in Jerusalem the night before his crucifixion. And in light of all that, it's easy to assume that Jesus might be talking about his own sacrifice, the lying down of his own life, which he will soon be making. It may even be tempting to think that he is saying, if you are going to be his follower, you've got to prove your love by being willing to die a martyr's death. But I don't think that's the case. And even if it was, I don't think a whole lot of us would be willing to go that far. I don't think he's saying we need to lay down our life, but rather we need to lay down our ego. And sometimes, I think that's a whole lot more difficult. The voice of the ego can be very deceptive. We often think of the ego's voice as telling us how great we are, how beautiful we are, how successful we are, and what we need to do to ensure that we continue to be great, beautiful, and successful. But sometimes the voices tell us we are unworthy of love. We are inconsequential to others. And we are incapable of doing anything right. In both cases, whether they are voices of pride or voices of shame, they are still voices about us. The ego has its way with us, one way or the other. But Jesus commands us to lay aside our ego for someone else. We do something, or we say something, or we just sit still and listen without talking and without thinking about ourselves. We talk about peanuts if a person wants to talk about peanuts. If we do this, if we set aside our ego for another person, then we come one step closer to repairing the world. It's a broken world we live in. All you have to do is turn on the television or pick up a newspaper and you'll see just how broken it is. But there's hope. There's hope when we're able to set aside our egos and love one another. So, if you're trying to be a disciple of Jesus, if you want to know what you have to do to be one of his followers, all you have to do is just put down the paper, shut down the computer, turn off the television, 
and find someone who needs to talk and talk about peanuts if that's what they want. Amen.